Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you, and with your spirit. So this is the Vigil Mass for the feast, the great feast of our Lord Jesus Christ, King of the universe, the King of kings and Lord of lords. We give thanks that the Father has sent us his Son to, uh, to die for us, and to open the way to heaven for us, and to rule in our hearts as King of Kings. And the Mass is also, traditionally we, we remember in our Mass today, uh, the intention of our young people. Uh, it was always called Youth Sunday, uh, when we uh, focus particularly on our young people, called to serve in their own circumstances and to give of themselves. We pray for our young people and for the work of especially the diocesan youth services at Castlerigg. The Mass is offered for the people of the parish of St. Peter's. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. 
We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, Only Begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty ever-living God, whose will is to restore all things in your beloved Son, the King of the universe, grant we pray that the whole creation set free from slavery may render your majesty service and ceaselessly proclaim your praise. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, for ever and ever. Amen. A reading from the prophet Ezekiel. The Lord says this, I'm going to look after my flock myself and keep all of it in view. As a shepherd keeps all his flock in view when he stands up in the middle of his scattered sheep, so shall I keep my sheep in view. I shall rescue them from wherever they have been scattered during the mist and darkness. I myself will pasture my sheep. I myself will show them where to rest. It is the Lord who speaks. I shall look for the lost one, bring back the stray, bandage the wounded and make the weak strong. I shall watch over the fat and healthy. I shall be a true shepherd to them. As for you, my sheep, the Lord says this, I will judge between sheep and sheep, between rams and he goats. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. Fresh and green are the pastures where he gives me repose. The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. Near restful waters he leads me to revive my drooping spirit. He guides me along the right path, he is true to his name. The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. You have prepared a banquet for me in the sight of my foes. My head you have anointed with oil, my cup is overflowing. The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. Surely goodness and kindness shall follow me all the days of my life. In the Lord's own house shall I dwell for ever and ever. The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Christ has been raised from the dead, the first fruits of all who have fallen asleep. Death came through one man, and in the same way, the resurrection of the dead has come through one man. Just as all men die in Adam, so all men will be brought to life in Christ, but all of them in their proper order. Christ is the first fruits. And then, after the coming of Christ, those who belong to him. After that will come the end, when he hands over the kingdom to God the Father, having done away with every sovereignty, authority and power. For he must be king until he has put all his enemies under his feet, and the last of the enemies to be destroyed is death. And when everything is subjected to him, then the Son himself will be subject in his turn to the one who subjected all things to him, so that God may be all in all. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. Blessings on him who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessings on the coming kingdom of our father David. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord be with you. 
and with your spirit, a reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, When the Son of Man comes in his glory, escorted by all the angels, then he will take his seat on his throne of glory. All the nations will be assembled before him, and he will separate men one from another, as the shepherd separates sheep from goats. He will place the sheep on his right hand and the goats on his left. Then the king will say to those on his right hand, Come you whom my father has blessed, take for your heritage the kingdom prepared for you since the foundation of the world. For I was hungry and you gave me food. I was thirsty and you gave me drink. I was a stranger and you made me welcome, naked and you clothed me, sick and you visited me, in prison and you came to see me. Then the virtuous will say to him in reply, Lord, when did we see you hungry and feed you, or thirsty and give you drink? When, we, when did we see you a stranger and make you welcome, naked and clothe you, sick or in prison and go to see you? And the king will answer, I tell you solemnly, in so far as you did this to one of the least of these brothers of mine, you did it to me. Next he will say to those on his left hand, Go away from me with your curse upon you, to the eternal fire prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was hungry and you never gave me food. I was thirsty and you never gave me anything to drink. I was a stranger and you never made me welcome. Naked and you never clothed me, sick and in prison and you never visited me. Then it will be their turn to ask, Lord, when did we see you hungry or thirsty or a stranger or naked, sick or in prison and did not come to your help? Then he will answer, I tell you solemnly, in so far as you neglected to do this to one of the least of these, you neglected to do it to me. And they will go away to eternal punishment, and the virtuous to eternal life. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. My brother Peter and I were ordained to the priesthood together. And so we had to work together on the readings and hymns to be selected for the Mass of Ordination. We had our different choices for the various texts, but managed to incorporate some of what each had chosen in the setting of the Mass. I seem to recall that one choice we both made was for the hymn, The Servant King, which was sung at the offertory. The words of the chorus were very fitting. This is our God, the servant king. He calls us now to follow him, to bring our lives as a daily offering of worship to the servant king. My brother and I were and are called to follow the servant king in giving our lives as servants of the servant, bringing our lives and those of others as a daily offering, particularly in the offering of that perfect sacrifice of the Mass, of worship to the Blessed Trinity. Christ is King in a way that confounds our understanding of leadership, for it is precisely by the emptying of himself and giving of himself that Christ's kingship is manifested. He emptied himself to assume the condition of a slave, and became as men are, and being as men are, he was humbler yet, even to accepting death, death on a cross. But God raised him high, and gave him the name which is above all other names, so that all beings in the heavens, on earth and in the underworld, should bend the knee at the name of Jesus. For he must be king until he has put all his enemies under his feet, and the last of the enemies to be destroyed is death, for everything is to be put under his feet. The Lord turns the world upside down 
by revealing his love, God's love for us, in actually dying for us. And it is that love that triumphs over all. God is ruling the world from the very cross itself. And the cross is a glimpse into the infinite abyss of God's love for each and every one of us. The feast of Christ the King was instituted by Pope Pius XI in 1925. It was to give an answer to the despair that seemed to be taking hold after the devastation of the world war not long ended or perhaps we should say, the brief pause before the next headlong plunge into world conflict. In the encyclical Quas Primas that announced the new feast, the Pope spoke of the manifold evils in the world that were due to the fact that the majority of men had thrust Jesus Christ and his holy law out of their lives that these had no place either in private affairs or in politics and that as long as individuals and states refused to submit to the rule of our saviour there would be no really hopeful prospect of a lasting peace among nations. At a time that saw the fall of kings and kingdoms and the rise of new dictators and their worst di dictatorships the church offered a counter narrative in the king of kings who is servant and gave his life for all a king of whose kingdom there shall be no end christ's reign is a corrective for both nations and rulers but also for every person both in the whole span of our lives and the smaller sacrifices of our everyday existence. His reign reaches out to every moment and every encounter. And so to the gospel, the sheep and the goats. This week we have the third and last part of Matthew chapter 25. Two Sundays ago we had the wise and foolish virgins trimming, or not as the case may be, their lamps with oil. At baptism, we are anointed prophets, priests and kings and we're given the gift of faith which we must fan into a flame by trimming our lamps with good works in response to God's grace. Last week we heard of the talents given to be put to good use and the hope we should have that we can attain to salvation if only we put our trust in the Lord. Today we see how we must show our love for others, as we ourselves are loved by the Lord. Freely you have received, now freely give. Do as Christ does. Empty ourselves of selfish concern. Take on board the message of the kingdom and the lesson of the king. Give as if to give back to our Lord the king himself. For as he says, whatever you do unto the least of these, you do unto me. We need to pray earnestly to him for that great gift of charity, that we may lay our hearts open to him and to one another, and that he may reign in us and through us. To quote once again from Quas Primas, so he is sent to reign in the hearts of men, both by reason of the keenness of his intellect and the extent of his knowledge, and also because he is very truth, and it is from him that truth must be obediently received by all mankind. He reigns too in the wills of men, for in him the human will was perfectly and entirely, entirely obedient to the holy will of God, and further by his grace and inspiration, he so subjects our free will as to incite us to the most noble endeavours. He is king of hearts too, by reason of his charity, which exceeds all knowledge. And as that hymn, the servant king tells us, 
So let us learn how to serve and in our lives enthrone him. Each other's needs to prefer, for it is Christ we're serving. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let's profess our faith together. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who is spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray. To God the Almighty Father, dear brothers and sisters, may every prayer of our heart be directed, for his will it is that all humanity should be saved and come to the knowledge of the truth. We pray for our Pope Francis and all bishops, clergy and people, that our hearts may be open to the work of Christ the King, that we may serve him in humility and love of him and our neighbour. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for the church throughout the world, especially where she is persecuted. We pray for our brothers and sisters who suffer for their faith, that they may be given new heart by Christ the King, who suffered and died, that we might live. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for peace throughout the world, that peace which the world cannot give that all leaders may be inspired by the example of Christ the King, who came not to be served, but to serve. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for uh, our people at the moment suffering under the uh, heavy burdens of the coronavirus crisis in many ways, whether because of sickness or the need to serve others in need, particularly those in the health and caring services, or because of the difficulties due to lockdown. We pray for all those who are called to public service and who are responsible for making decisions about public policy and helping to manage the crisis. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray on this Sunday especially for our young people, that they may be inspired to answer the call to all the young people to give their lives in loving service for God and neighbour. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for our parishes, the parish of St. Peter's and of St. Joseph's, and for all the work that we do to reach out to our brothers and sisters in need. May we be reminded that when we serve them, it is Christ we are serving. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for the sick especially those who are sick, whether at home or in hospital, in the hospice or in care facilities, and for those who care for them. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray in this month of the Holy Souls for all our faithful departed, for all those on the list that we may have formed of our dearly departed loved ones, for those whose anniversaries at about this time, and for all the recently departed. May their souls rest in peace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We ask the prayers of Mary, the mother of Christ, as we pray together. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. 
Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now, and at the hour of our death. Amen. We pray for a few moments in the silence of our hearts for our own private needs and intentions. O God, our refuge and our strength, hear the prayers of your church, for you yourself are the source of all devotion, and grant, we pray, that what we ask in faith we may truly obtain, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands, for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. As we offer you, O Lord, the sacrifice by which the human race is reconciled to you, we humbly pray that your Son himself may bestow on all nations the gifts of unity and peace. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Lift up your hearts, we lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God. For you anointed your only begotten Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, with the oil of gladness, as eternal priest and King of all creation, so that by offering himself on the altar of the cross, as a spotless sacrifice to bring us peace, he might accomplish the mysteries of human redemption and making all created things subject to his rule, he might present to the immensity of your majesty an eternal and universal kingdom, a kingdom of truth and life, a kingdom of holiness and grace, a kingdom of justice, love and peace. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and, dom and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. To you, therefore, most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace, to guard, unite and govern her throughout the whole world, together with your servant Francis our Pope and Paul our Bishop, and all those who holding to the truth hand on the Catholic and apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants. And all gathered here, whose faith and devotion are known to you, for them we offer you this sacrifice of praise, or they offer it for themselves and all who are dear to them, for the redemption of their souls in hope of health and well-being, and paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true. In communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever-Virgin Mary, Mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, James, John, Thomas, James, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon and Jude, Linus, Cletus, Clement, Sixtus, Cornelius, Cyprian, Lawrence, Cosogonus, John and Paul, Cosmos and Damien and all your saints. We ask that through their merits and prayers in all things we may be defended by your protecting help. 
Therefore, Lord, we pray, graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family. Order our days in your peace and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation and counted among the flock of those you have chosen. Be pleased, O oh God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge and approve this offering in every respect. Make it spiritual and acceptable so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands, and with eyes raised to heaven, to you, O God, his almighty Father, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands. And once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the blessed passion, the resurrection from the dead, and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ your Son, our Lord, we, your servants and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts that you have given us, this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance and to accept them as once you were pleased to accept the gift of your servant Abel the just, the sacrifice of Abraham our father in faith and the offering of your high priest Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer we ask you, Almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high in the sight of your divine majesty so that all of us who through this participation at the altar receive the most holy body and blood of your Son may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. Remember also, Lord, your servants, who have gone before us with the sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ a place of refreshment, light and peace. To us also your servants who those sinners, hope in your abundant mercies, graciously grant some share and fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, Ignatius, Alexander, Marcellinus, Peter, Felicity, Perpetua, Agatha, Lucy, Agnes, Cecilia, Anastasia, and all your saints. Admit us, we beseech you into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon. Through Christ our Lord, through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord, you sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Saviour's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, 
Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity, in accordance with your will, who live and reign for ever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always, and with your spirit. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Lord sits as king forever. The Lord will bless his people with peace. sacrament most holy, our sacrament divine, all praise and all thanksgiving be every moment thine. Our sacrament most holy, our sacrament divine, all praise and all thanksgiving be every moment thine. Our sacrament most holy, our sacrament divine, all praise and all thanksgiving be every moment thine. Let us pray. Having received the food of immortality, we ask, O Lord, that glory, glorying in obedience to the commands of Christ, the King of the universe, we may live with him eternally in his heavenly kingdom, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go and announce the gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to God. From heaven you came, helpless babe, entered our world, your glory veiled, not to be served, but to serve. And give your life that we might live. This is our God, the servant king. He calls us now to follow him. To bring our lives as a daily offering. 
of worship to the servant king there in the garden of tears my heavy load he chose to bear his heart with sorrow was torn yet not my will but yours he said okay, this is our god the servant king he calls us now to follow him to bring our lives as a daily offering of worship to the servant king come see his fans and his feet the scars that speak of sacrifice hands that flung stars into space to cruel nails surrendered this is our god the servant king he calls us now to follow him to bring our lives as a daily offering of worship to the servant king so let us learn how to serve and in our lives enthrone him each other's needs to prefer for it is christ we're serving this is our god the servant king he calls us now to follow him to bring our lives as a day of